Hercules completed his ninth labor and laid the belt of Queen Hippolyte at the feet of King Eurystheus. But the king gave him no rest and assigned his next task immediately. Obtaining the cattle of Gerion from Eurythia was Hercules' tenth task. These cattle were magnificent beasts with coats made red by the red light of the sunset. The danger in this task, though, was the fact that the cattle were owned by Gerion. Gerion himself was enormous. He had three bodies, three heads, six arms, and six feet. Gerion was the son of Calirho, who was the daughter of Oceanus and Tethys, which made Gerion the grandson of the Titans. On his island, Gerion kept a herd of red cattle guarded by Cerebrus's brother Orthus, a two-headed hound, and the fierce herdsman Eurytion. Task 10. Cattle of Gerion. Hercules set off on for Eurythia, encountering and promptly killing many wild beasts along the way. After long wandering through desert country, he came at last to a fruitful land through which great streams flow. Here, he founded a city of vast size, which he named Hecatompolos, which means city of a hundred gates. When Hercules reached the most western point of his journey, he split a mountain in half, creating the Strait of Gibraltar. These mountains were later known as the Pillars of Hercules. Hercules then crossed the Libyan desert. After traveling through the desert for three days and three nights, Hercules was so hot and thirsty by now. He got so angry that he shot an arrow at the sun. Helios, or the sun god, was not mad at Hercules' failed attempt to kill him. Instead, Helios admired Hercules' courage and granted him a golden cup. This wasn't a cup for drinking, for you see, it was a cup that would allow the last leg of Hercules' journey. It was a special cup that Hercules was going to sail in to the island of Erythia. The golden boat allowed Hercules to quickly sail to Erythia, and on the island shoreline, the hero landed. Not long after he arrived, Orthus, the two-headed dog, attacked Hercules. So Hercules bashed him with his club, killing him in a single stroke. He also killed the giant herdsman who came to help the dog. Just as Hercules was hurrying away with the cattle, he was confronted by Gerion himself. Hercules, exhausted from his travels, took out an arrow and dipped it in the poisonous blood from the Lernaean Hydra and shot Gerion in each of his three heads, killing him instantly. Hera, however, was not about to let the hero accomplish this labor. When Hercules reached Thrace, Hera sent a swarm of gadflies to bite the cattle. When the gadflies started biting the cattle, they got scared and scattered all over the island. It took Hercules a whole year to gather back all the cattle and continue his journey. Hera then caused the river Strymon to flood to make it impassable. The flood was only a minor setback. Hercules threw rocks into the river until it was shallow enough for the cattle to safely cross it. Eventually, Hercules returned to the court of King Eurystheus, driving the cattle of Gerion before him. Once again, Eurystheus was disappointed by the fact that Hercules had not died in the attempting of the task. Taking the cattle from the hero, Eurystheus sacrificed all of the herd to his benefactor, Hera. Eurystheus wasted no time 
and he summoned Hercules to give him his next labor. For the final and most difficult labor, King Eurystheus asked Hercules to bring him Cerberus from the underworld to prove his strength and fearlessness. To Eurystheus, this seemed an impossible task. Task 12. Capture Cerberus Cerberus was a vicious beast that guarded the entrance to Hades and kept the living from entering the world of the dead. According to some legends, Cerberus was a strange mixture of creatures. He had three heads of wild dogs, a dragon for a tail, and heads of snakes all over his back. Hercules was not daunted. Before making the trip to the underworld, Hercules decided that he should take some extra precautions. This was, after all, a journey from which no mortal had ever returned. Hercules decided to be initiated in the Eleusinian Mysteries so that he would be taught how to travel alive from the world of the living to the realm of the dead and vice versa. The ancients believed that those who learned the secrets of the mysteries would have happiness in the underworld. After the hero met a few conditions of membership, the priests initiated Hercules into the mysteries. Then. With strength to meet the horrors of the underworld, Hercules traveled on to the Laconian city of Tainaris, which contained the opening to the underworld. Through a deep, rocky cave, Hercules made his way down to the underworld. He encountered monsters, heroes, and ghosts as he made his way through. The first barrier to the soul's journey beyond the grave was the River Styx. One could cross this river only with the help of Sharon, the boatman's ferry boat. Sharon accepted only those who were dead and whose corpses had gold coins under their tongues. Hercules met neither condition. Suddenly, goddess Hestia appeared, and she helped him negotiate with Sharon. Sharon agreed and helped Hercules cross the Styx. Hercules then found the entrance to the underworld, but instead of attacking Cerberus, he went straight to Hades to ask permission to take his beloved hellhound. Hades was impressed by the respect shown by Hercules in coming to him first before going to his hound. Hades was so impressed, in fact, that he allowed Hercules to try his luck, but only on a few conditions. Hercules could not kill or seriously injure Cerberus. This meant no weapons could be used. He found the dog camping near the dwelling of Acheron. Without paying any attention to the bellowing of the three heads, which was like the echo of fearful resounding thunder, he seized the dog by the legs, put his arms around his neck, and would not let him go. The dragon tail of the animal kept biting him in his cheek, but Hercules held the dog even stronger. Cerberus had to submit to the force of the hero, and Hercules left the underworld. The king, who thought this was a suicide mission, was shocked, dismayed, and frightened when he saw Hercules with Cerberus. Cowering behind his throne, he gave Hercules due credit for this final labor. Hercules then went on to return the dog to its master. Hades made an appearance in front of Eurystheus, demanding to know why he would want his favorite pup as a trophy. Eurystheus almost fainted. Begging Hades' forgiveness and asking that he spare him, 
Eurystheus revealed that he received orders for all of Hercules' labors from Hera herself. The tale goes that a none too happy Hades visited Hera and warned her if she ever sent Hercules on any such errand again, she would have to deal with him. Thus did the labors of Hercules come to an end.